everyone. For today's episode, we've got a different set of questions. Today's theme is culture and alignment. Welcome to episode number six of Karanology. As usual, the voice of these questions is going to be Payal. So Payal, what's the first question? The first question is by Umang. Finding difficulty in aligning one of the managers into system who is taking care of a new vertical. He is sharp and capable of doing things but is lazy and lethargic. Because of that, we are not getting results. He himself gets satisfied with whatever result he gets. Guide me how to handle him. So first of all, Umang, thank you so much for that question. And uh, I've seen this with a lot of entrepreneurs who face this challenge that they feel that their senior people may be lazy or may be very satisfied having no drive. So let's understand how does this drive need to be inculcated? Let's need how does it need to be created? So how does performance happen? Performance happens because of two factors competence and commitment and among based on what you've shared obviously the issue is commitment because the attitude is a problem and your team member is does not have the drive to go out there and perform so the focus area on how to build commitment to get people to have that drive is to create a culture and i would say that's not just for your team member you should be doing that for your entire organization where people need to know what is their purpose? Why are they doing what they're doing? What's in it for them? And how is it aligned to the goals you set? So sit with your team member and ask that person, what's his purpose of doing what he's doing? So that he has a reason for him to perform. And then set goals, provide feedback so that he knows what to do differently in order to achieve these goals. So the key word over here is purpose because when people know what is their purpose behind what they're doing, it gives them the drive and the fuel to perform. So Umang, hope that is useful for you. Payal, what's the second question? The second question is by Harsh. One of the most important things to look at when you are investing in change culture internally is to also look at what is the return on investing years into molding and setting that culture. Is it worth a shot to put in a lot of effort into changing culture? So Harsh, that's a pretty interesting question, I must say. And uh, I wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be wrong for a lot of entrepreneurs to consider the kind of efforts which people need to put in to change culture. But let me tell you about how culture works. Culture is the context for any organization. Culture is the background which creates the platform for people to behave in a certain manner. The culture has an impact on people's attitude. Culture has an impact on the way people behave with each other, the way people relate to each other, the kind of emotions people have, the kind of motivation people have, and therefore is the foundation for any performance in an organization. So the culture is vital. And bottom line, the culture can have a positive effect or a negative effect. If the culture is destructive, obviously the effect is negative and the culture is constructive, obviously the impact is positive, which means people are aligned. So in simple words, culture has a direct impact on how people are aligned. So yes, it definitely makes sense to invest on changing the culture, especially when the culture is not helping you to align your organization towards its goals. And I'll tell you what, that's where you need to understand that, like, let me tell you a different example of how culture works. Culture is like religion. If you look at any religion, it has its rituals, it has its systems, it has its practices, it has its behaviors. And people follow that because they've been brought up in that way. Similarly, a culture works like a religion in an organization which tells people how to work, what way to work, how to communicate, how not to communicate. So people behave in a certain manner and that becomes the baseline for people to perform. So yes, it is very, very, very vital for you to invest and put in that effort to create a culture because when you don't create that culture, then you have a default culture and that is also a culture which creates misalignment. So please do invest the time and effort. Hope that was useful for you, Harsh. Pile, what's the third question? The third question is by Ujwal. I've been a corporate employee all my life and now I am an entrepreneur with a team of 10 people working for me. I have seen that there is an attrition rate in my company and after spending a lot of time on finding out the reason, I have realized that realized it is due to the culture of the organization, which is mostly like a corporate. How do I change this? Are there any action steps I can follow? 
So Joel, very, very interesting question. And uh, yes, there are a lot of businesses where attrition is high. And one of the reasons why attrition is high is culture. Think about this. You're giving them good growth. You're giving them good opportunity. You're giving them a good pay package. You're giving them a lot of responsibilities. Everything is there. But in spite of that, people are leaving. Why? Because people are not aligned towards the culture. And when you make this statement that the culture is like a corporate, corporates work very differently compared to small and medium business owners. And I sincerely believe that a corporate culture cannot work in a small and medium enterprise. I'm not saying it should not be structured. I'm not saying it should not have system. But the way people need to work need to be different because the kind of resources a small and medium business has is not as per a corporate. So here's the deal. What are the action steps for you to do? Please understand this. There are two kinds of cultures you can have. One is a default culture. One is a design culture. Right now, because of a lot of your team members come from a corporate organization, they are operating like a corporate organization because that's what they've been brought up with. You need to design a culture, design a culture which works for you and works for your team to hold them together, be aligned towards your organization goals. So what are your action steps? Like you asked me, Ojwal action step number one, you with your team decide on some core principles you want to follow, which will be the guiding principles for you, for you to design your culture. What are the principles which all of you agree to, which no matter what, you're going to keep like a value system. Step number two. Break down these principles into clear behaviors which people can do in multiple situations. That's how you can make culture tangible. And number three, educate. You need to educate people on these behaviors so they know how to behave in different situations and you're able, they're able to follow these guiding principles in all situations you face. And when you do that, you get people to be a lot more aligned towards the organization, which will definitely have an impact on reducing attrition. So Ujwal, I hope that's straightforward action steps for you. Pile, what's the fourth and the final question for today's episode? The fourth question is by Vinay. My organization has a stellar culture because of because for the last five years we have been productive and have bonded as a company. But the ones we are hiring now are not able to adjust to this culture and are planning on leaving the firm. A few of them even said to me directly, how do I ensure that this does not happen? Wow, that's a that's a very interesting question, Vinay. And I'm I'm let me tell you that it's a very common thing to have where you know, when you are a small organization, a culture works, but suddenly when you are growing, when different people from outside come in, obviously they don't, they have their own way of behaving. And as a result of that, the way you used to operate does not seem like it's working. And suddenly you see things going out of control, bound to happen. In fact, let me tell you when I, something to comfort you, it's a very, very natural progression for you to have. And this is a growth challenge, it's a good challenge to have, but it also causes for a lot of change. Like I said before, culture is the context for the entire organization. Culture dictates how people behave, how people relate to each other. And with time, with new people coming in, you got to redesign what works. So here's my suggestion for you, Vinay. Sit down with your team and recreate, redesign the culture, which is beneficial to everybody. And a guiding principle, which I would like to suggest to you is a principle called win, win, win. Let me tell you what I mean by win, win, win. Your customer needs to win, you need to win as a business owner, and your team needs to win. And I believe that's the new age philosophy with which, with which every business should operate today because these are three stakeholders which really make the business and ensure that the business is growing. And you gotta design a culture which ensures that win, win, win is happening. And probably what you were doing in the past may not be beneficial for everybody in the organization. So how do you gain that ownership from people where they themselves align to the culture? Involve them, get them to sit together and redesign a culture which is win, 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 and then educate people on how they can go ahead and implement these culture frameworks. I'm telling you this, a big mistake which a lot of business owners make is that they have a culture, but they do not go and educate people on how can they implement this culture. How do you expect people to know how to behave and how to be aligned if they don't know what the culture is and how they need to be oriented into the culture? So education is important. So you can have that benchmark of how people need to behave. Even after that, if because of that people are leaving, then let me tell you the truth, Vinay, so be it. Because after recreating a culture with everybody and educating them, if people are still not happy or still not aligning to the culture, 
then the truth is that maybe this is not the place for them because they are not subscribing to win, win, win. In fact, if I were you, I would show them the red carpet because here's my sincere belief. If people are not aligned in spite of including them to a win, win, win culture, then your organization is not a place for them. So go ahead and do that, Vinay. I hope that was useful for you. I hope all of my insights have been useful to all of you. Please take action because at the end of the day, there's no point of you just hearing knowledge without taking action. That's when you're truly taking your education to the next level. And I would really, really like to hear your comments of what has worked for you, what has not worked for you, and what are the other challenges you are facing? So what are the other questions you have? So that I can pick up these questions and answer it in my forthcoming episodes of Karnology. In the meanwhile, stay safe. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.